On today's Daily Slab, we are going to talk about Erling Holland's big day. Unfortunately, probably the best draft class for an MLB team I've ever seen. And we are going to finish it off with a little prospect talk from one of the best prospects in MLB spring training right now. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's Daily Slab. Welcome everyone to the Daily Slab. I am Nate, and our trender for today is Erling Holland. So Holland obviously has had an amazing year. We've talked about him before on this very show. He is probably going to break the Premier League record for goals scored in a year as a 22-year-old in his first year in the Premier League, right? That's obviously an amazing year. But he did something in the Champions League against Leipzig the other day that was even more impressive. He scored five goals in one match against another Champions League team. Should be impossible, and yet it isn't because it's Erling Holland. At this point, nothing he does is surprising anymore because he is just clearly far and away the best player in the world, at least the best scorer in the world. Erling Holland has been incredible and it takes a lot to move your market the way he did in two weeks, considering how hot he has been before this point. You know you had to have a special game, like a five-goal game, to move his market the way it moved. Because it, we're only talking two weeks here, and it went up $118.16%. Now, 16%, that's not drastic. I get that. But considering a two-week stretch and considering how hot he was before this, um, in the Premier League, to do this and to move your cards that much, very, very impressive. Erling Holland. by the time it's all said and done, we might be looking at the best player ever. All right, in what's hot today, we've got an MLB draft class that is unfortunately, for this Brewers fan, probably one of the best draft classes I've ever seen. So back in 2020, there were only five rounds because of COVID. They only had five rounds of the draft. A lot of a lot of that had to do with MLB owners wanting to save money and not signing all these guys. In those five rounds, the Cardinals managed to draft four top 100 prospects. Is that obnoxious? Yes, it is. They drafted Jordan Walker with the 21st pick, Mason Wynn with the 54th pick, Tink Hentz with the 63rd pick, and Alec Burleson with the 70th pick. Those were their top four picks. They drafted those four guys. Jordan Walker is obviously the hottest name in baseball. Mason Wynn has been very good this spring training. Tink Hentz has the potential to be the best pitching prospect in baseball if he can continue carrying his velocity later into games. And Alec Burleson is obviously a top 100 prospect himself and a very nice prospect. Now, the reason I stumbled upon this was because at Burbank Card Show, I had bought a Sapphire PSA 10 of Jordan Walker, and it should be sold by the time you are listening to this. I do have a live stream on whatnot on Thursday night, the day I'm recording, so that should be sold. But also, I had seen Mason Wynn's stats, and I had seen some exit velocity numbers for him, so I went buying some Sapphire cards. So, hand up, I do own some of these cards, and it's the reason I found this out or even paid attention in the first place. So I don't want you guys being like, oh, Nathan's, it's, it's, I do own these cards. I do own some of them. I don't expect to own the Jordan Walker by the time we are talking about this on Friday and you're listening to this, but I do own some Mason Wynn Sapphire cards. They're not graded. They're not PSA 10s, but I do own some, um, just so we're all clear on that point. But it is crazy to me how they drafted four guys in a row and all four ended up top 100 prospects and two of them. Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn, if Mason Wynn continues the way he's going, which is why I bought him, seem like they could probably be, you know, Jordan Walker's number three prospect, and um, by some, or number four by MLB Pipeline, and you get Mason Wynn, who, if he continues the exit velocity along with the shortstop play and everything, could be amazing, and Tink Hens along with him, if he continues the exit velocity, or the uh, pitching late in the games and stuff. It's incredible. It's incredible. I hate it. As a Brewers fan, I hate it, but it is incredible. And their prices, too, those are pretty incredible. So Walker Sapphire PSA 10, that is $380 the last sale. Mason Wentz, that was $120 last sale. Tank Hans, $51 last sale. You combine those three together, those are three guys, Sapphire PSA 10s, that add up to $550 from the same draft class. And Alec Burleson, he didn't have a Sapphire PSA 10, but he did have a Gold Wave 
auto PSA 9 that sold for 102, which is obviously a r nice card and sold significantly less than some of these Sapphire PSA 10s. And just goes to show you how much people care when you got other guys like a Jordan Walker, like a Mason Wynn in the farm system where people are more keying in on them. But regardless of any of that, this is probably the most amazing draft I've ever seen one team pull off. And uh, I begrudgingly appreciate it. For our post of the day, we've got this Jason Dominguez post. And Jason Dominguez has been excellent this spring training. If you haven't been paying attention, he is hitting 429 with a 500 on base and a 1,000 slugging with four home runs out of his nine hits in the early going. He has been excellent as a 20-year-old. Truly, truly excellent. He got to play in double-A last year. Now we'll see him probably in triple-A before he makes the majors. I wouldn't be shocked if he makes the majors this year. It is, it is, for, from where he began and how disappointing his first year was to where he is now, a total 180, very, very incredible. And so the question here is you can see the graph. And so his cards are up um, significantly, 103% and $1,600 for his Refractor PSA 10 auto in the last three months. So the question is, he's obviously had a very hot month um, of spring training. He's obviously a very big name. He's got the Martian nickname. Everyone knows it. The question is, do you sell now? Well, it's hot, or do you say to yourself, Yankees, he's doing really well. We expect him to be one of the best players in the MLB when he gets up and matures, um, he gets older. Not maturity uh, like he's inappropriate wise or anything like that, but mature like get older, get, you know, stuff like that. So, will Jason Dominguez become better, and would you want to hold, or do you want to capitalize on these gains right now? As for me, I had that very question. I sold. I had an Orange Wave BGS9 that I ended up selling a little bit too early, but I sold, made profit, and I call it a day and move on to the next one. But I want to hear what you guys think. Are you selling? Are you holding? Let me know in the comments below. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching today's Daily Slab. If you like this video, please click that like button, and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you who have watched today, and I will talk to you guys over the weekend for the next Daily Slab. See you, everyone.